Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Lists. In this module, I want to show you how you can create a calculated column that will react to other columns within your list. So on the screen, I have the finished article and this is what I want to recreate. So you can see there I've got a received, these are stock items, received and sold. And then there's a status column, which is a choice column telling you when it was sold or if it was sold or not. And then this duration in stock tells you how long it was in stock for. So that was received in on the first, sold on the third, two days. This one is still in stock and it's telling me that it's been in stock for 13 days. And that one's been in stock for three days. Now, if I put a date in this particular box, I need to edit this first. If I put a date in that box, it will then stay at 13. But as it is at the moment, the formula that's in there that will keep growing as we move forward in time. So what I want to do is create a new list and then you'll see how that whole thing works. So if I just go to uh, site content, so the list is going to be in this site and then in site contents, I can click on new list. Now I could have gone to lists, my lists, and I could have created it there as well, but I'm just going to do it here. So it sits inside this SharePoint site. Now you've got options there. I'm just going to create a blank list and uh, just call it status one and then I can delete this one later on. It's got a tick there saying showing navigation. Yes, click create and then you, you're there ready to start creating your columns. So the title column and add column there, but what I'm going to do is go into settings and do it in settings. I think it's easier in settings. It's also what you need to go to do a formula anyhow so list settings in there and then you're sort of in the back end of it so you can see the title column there and it's a single line of text and it's required so if I want to edit that one I need to click on title and change that so I'll just call that product ID like the other one click away from that so I renamed that and it um, enforced unique values yeah i don't want duplicate values and i don't need it to be 255 let's go for 50. Uh, it won't be no longer than 50 characters in fact i'll probably better put that down at 10 characters and I just click okay to that yeah okay so that's the first one done so it's called product id so now i need to add some columns so i'm going to add those two columns create column um, date received this is going to be a date time tick on date time date received date time and then you can set the date format if you want but i'm just going to save it for now okay if you find you need to change the format you can come back into it um, later on so a new column i'll go date date sold and then again, that's going to be a date time. Tick that one, click OK. And then now I want to do the sort of calculation. But before I do a calculation, I probably need a trigger field. So I'll just do one more column so I can do a choice column. So this is going to be um, status. And then I can do a choice. I'll just have sold or not. Wait for it to click over to the options. Scroll down a little bit. So you've got three choices. Um, so I want sold in stock. It's just the two choices I want. Um, I don't need a default value for that. I'll just click OK. And then now I need the calculation field. So let's go for a new column. Click column. I just want to call it duration. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to have to put a and if an if statement and forget this to work here's the calculated option i'll tick that and then you've got if you scroll down a list of the fields and then the formula box so i need to be putting in here uh, equals if open the bracket so if status is equal to sold that's what i want to do first off so if status oh, needs to be in square brackets if status in square bracket equals sold now sold has to go in quotes so that's the test if it's sold I want it to come up with um, 
date sold minus date received. So that again has to go in square brackets. So date sold square brackets minus in square brackets as well date received close square brackets so that's what i want it to do if it's true comma if it's false i want it to go use a function called today today which has to go like that with an open and close bracket minus date received which will tell me how many days it's been in stock date received in square brackets close the if now if there's a typo anywhere in there um, or an error in the formula when you click OK it's going to come up and tell you that so if I go, if I go down to the bottom and click OK it, it liked it so that's OK so we've got status one there that's the list now you can put other columns in there obviously but I'm just going to test this to see if this works just if I go to status one that should be sh show me those columns I need to edit it so let me give myself some IDs product one coming down two coming down three coming down so the default is saying sold there so if I say date received um, was the first date sold was the third now I'm wanting that to change over and they saw it change over there now if I don't sell this one so I'll go date receive the second and change the status from sold to in stock and then click away I want that to tell me as well that's great it's working fine and then I do this last one so that was bought in on the 31st and we sold it today click away and then it will do the calculation so that's basically how you can do a calculation field by using square brackets to refer to the columns and if you're referring to any text you have to put those in quotes now there is another feature that you've got with these lists you can create a view and I can create a view of this list like a Gantt chart view and what it then does is puts that onto your site but I'll just show you how you how you do it so again we need to go back into settings list settings and the views for this list are down the bottom there there isn't any it's all items at the moment so if I create a new view in here you get these four options and this is the one I want a Gantt chart view you click on that and then you give it a name once it loads up I'll click it again There we go so the, I'll call this um, timeline one because I've already got one called timeline you've got the option there to make this your default view which I'm not going to do so I'm just gonna follow this down so down the bottom is I've got all the fields ticked there look but down the bottom you need to choose like whatever the the, um, the title is going to be so you've got product ID stuff there um, so let's go over product ID choose a start column so it's going to be date received and then the due date is going to be date sold that's just an example you obviously you need probably need a few more items I haven't got product description in there it's just the ID field and then you've got options to sort it and different layout options but down the bottom I'm just going to go down to OK and then let's see what that looks like so now you can see the Gantt chart and there there's the durations that this these items were in stock and that one's not got an end date because it's still not being sold simple create a new view and then you can look at that as a Gantt chart view now, now if I click on the shortcut for status one so we're in this area we're on SharePoint we've come onto this if I click on that what it does it just flicks it back to what you had before now in all items where you've got your different views you've got compact view you've got gallery view and you've got the timeline one view that I did but when you click on it it just sits it as a list so what you have to do is go into well it's one way you, you can do it go into list settings 
and then just select it from within list settings down the bottom there you've got your timeline view and then click OK to that and then it should sit it as a timeline so it's a bit strange how it does that there's quite a lot of chat on about that on the web why it does that um, but you've got the best of both worlds you can quickly click to that um, and then you get your list ideally you would want to click on that view you've created so it would show it, so it would show you as a gantt chart but you've got to go into settings to to trigger that as a gantt chart view now one of the things you've got in settings for that view is is a hyperlink so if i click on it um, you can actually create a, um, a link or use a link and people can just open the link direct but that's all i want to talk about in this little video how you can create calculations in a SharePoint list, that's the main point, and then how you can create your own view and how that would react if you created a Gantt chart view. There's the link, by the way, for this list. So hopefully this was of use. Catch you on the next one.